Hi guys and welcome to episode 4 and today I want to look at how God can be co-equal, co-eternal and divine as the Father, the Son and the Spirit at the same time without one being exalted over another. How can they all be equal and divine? Surely if they're divine one of them must be more divine than the other and rule over the other. That's not something that we see in the scripture and in a later video probably the next video I'm going to be talking about why we don't see the father ruling over the son and the son ruling over the spirit and we don't view a hierarchy of positions in the Godhead in the Trinity like this everyone in the Trinity is equal and I want to lay it out here and I'm going to deal with the verses that may suggest the otherwise in the next video that I make and so here we go in the Bible we read about how God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever shall believe on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And so the point of this verse is we read about the father sending his son and making his son known in this world. And his son was known because his son took the form of a man. And so being in the form of a man, us human beings got to know Jesus. We got to see how much he loved us how much he cared for us, how much he was willing to suffer for us, how much he was willing to serve us. And through God sending his son, the son was revealed to us. And then once we got to know the son, Jesus then begins to reveal something about what he's doing. Jesus came and he did one thing. He lived the perfect life and he was the exact image of his father. He did only what he heard the father do. And so Jesus, the scriptures reveal, does nothing except reveal his father's ways. And so by us knowing Jesus, Jesus reveals to us the father and the father sent the son so that we could get to know the son. And so we see this little loop going around. The son reveals the father and the father reveals the son. Now let's keep hold of that as I read a verse for you from the gospel of Luke. And it says, these are Jesus's words, by the way, all things have been handed over to me by my father and no one knows who the son is except the father or the father except the son and to anyone whom the son chooses to reveal him. That's a verse supporting what I've just said. It was Jesus's role to reveal the father and it was the father's role to send and to reveal the son. Now it gets a bit more interesting when we read the gospel of John, we're going to read about another person that the son speaks about and so here are Jesus' words in John 15 verse 26 and it reads but when the helper comes whom I will send to you from the father the spirit of truth who proceeds from the father he will bear witness about me and so in this passage we read about how Jesus and his father will both send the Holy Spirit into this world and the Holy Spirit will do what? He will teach us, he will bear witness and he will reveal to us Jesus. And so now we see that the father has revealed his son and he sent the Holy Spirit. Jesus has revealed the father and he's also been involved with sending and revealing the spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit does what? He reveals Jesus and in turn, Jesus reveals the father. And so we see this link of a web where they all exalt one another. It's very easy for someone to look at one element of that and say, God sent the son. So the son was subordinate and the son was serving the father's purpose. But when you look more closely, that actually the father revealed the son and the son revealed the father. The father sent the spirit and the spirit revealed the son and the son revealed Jesus. And you find that this loop and this web goes on and on. There is nobody that is over anybody in the Trinity. They all had a role in revealing one another so that God would always be a God who is a servant of people. He's always serving and forging and building relationship within himself. And this is really important to grasp because it's a picture of how God wants us to be as believers in his church. He wants us not to try to be served or to lord over one another, but to serve one another. And God is the perfect example of this in the Trinity. Now, I hope that didn't confuse you too much, but if it did, just look at this picture that I'm putting on the screen right now. The father sent the son and the son 
revealed the Father and the Son sent the Holy Spirit and revealed the Spirit and the Spirit revealed Jesus the Son and the Father had his part in sending the Holy Spirit to and the Holy Spirit revealed the Son who also in turn revealed the Father's nature unto us all and so it's through this web that we get involved with Jesus and we get to know the Spirit of God we also will get intimately to know the Father as we understand Jesus as we see Jesus we've also seen the Father and so hopefully you can understand some of the language that Jesus uses as you get a full picture of the scripture and how God interrelates within the Trinity you will see a beautiful harmony and it's the same harmony that God invites us to enter into and to live with one another and hold in love. God bless you and stay tuned to know more about the Trinity.